Hi, old guy in shed. Um, I've been working in the shed today. It's pretty good. Got a lot of work to do. Uh, sorry, got a lot of work done. Um, but earlier on today, I <coughs> excuse me <coughs> did a video on another bike. I know a, a, a few people have sort of commented. Oh, hope you're getting on with the V7 and do this with the V7. One thing or another with the V7. The V7 has gone uh, to a friend of mine, or his girlfriend. Um, and I, uh, as ever, because I am of that ilk, I went out and bought another 750 Guzzi. I got the um, Breva, 750 Breva, um, which... At first I thought it was a completely different bike, I thought it was a different frame, this and that. It isn't, it's bolt on bits on the same frame. So in actual fact it's pretty much like riding the um, V7 to be honest. Um, the, the barrels are a different shape. I mentioned this in the video. Um, I'm not used to sort of doing a video and then trying to edit it and then talk about it in the wrong context. It's tight. Yeah. It's a bit like living in a time warp for me. But hey, I'll crack on. The bike itself is a lot cheaper to buy than the V7 because it's an older bike. Um, and possibly a lot less fashionable uh, than, the, 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 than the current crop of the V7 and the Sport. The little cafe racer they did and the, the stone and all those variants uh, which were excellent bikes I've got to say uh, but so is this little Breva it's an excellent little bike it's got the fuel injection it's very fast very nice it's smooth it's quick it's it's light it is so light to ride and the one I, I came across uh, and bought has got the hard panniers the guzzy panniers with badges on them, everything. Ooh. Uh, five horse in them. And I um, had a go of it, and goes up years ago, well, a good few years ago now, I had the 1100 Breva, which I dearly loved. I thought that was like a keeper until I bought a Norge, which is in fact a Breva with a uh, party dress, you know, with the fairings and what have you. Um, but it's the same solid bike. And I thought, oh, it does feel different, it does feel different. And I sort of convinced myself it was a different bike to ride, the Norwich from the, the 1100 Breva. But this chap came along, really nice bloke, uh, from the Motor Guzzi Club, who we, we got to chatting and uh, came over to see me um, regarding the show and another bike. That's another story, another video. Um, but anyway, got to know him, a guy called Don, really nice bloke. And we had a good chat and we had a cup of coffee and we sat in the shed and we, chewed, we talked bollocks for a while about motorbikes. And then uh, he said, well, I better get going. I said, okay, which way are you going home? Because he, he lives in a place called Newport. He said, oh, I hadn't thought I was going to go for a bit of a run. I said, well, come with you. So we ended up going off to this place near Abergavenny called the Battle House. It's a, it was on Sunday. Very biker friendly place place full of motorbikes, lots of stuff there that's interesting and uh, it was really great. Of course I didn't film it, didn't film that trip at all, uh, which we should have because it would have been really good. Uh, problem when you guys come on here and you're dealing with an idiot, you know, here I am, a consummate idiot these days. So anyway, long story short, today I'm going to put up, show you a video of me riding the 750 Breva. Um, which I have to say is every bit as enjoyable as the, the V7 I rode. Um, and uh, I would say the only problem with it is the same as the V7, uh, is I'm very, I am now very used to having a screen in front of me. So the wind on your chest, especially at motorway speeds, it, it, you know, and in your face, is not the comfiest experience in the world. Uh, but it could it, it could be worse. It could be worse. But it's um in the lanes. It's fabulous fun. Really great fun to ride. You know what I mean? Does the job. Uh, like I say, I will be talking about that in the video itself. Excuse me a moment. 
by the way I finished work in here uh, and it is late it, it's not late afternoon it's early evening it's gone six and here we go the red wine um, it's a Malbec that really nice I enjoy a Malbec um, I'm sat on my little wheelie stool that spins about this is what I use when I'm working on on uh, my I, I, I really um, went into a moment of luxury a few years ago and bought myself a rising lift, a hydraulic lift for the bikes, which allows me to sit and play with the bikes and clean them underneath, uh, which is brilliant. For those of you who really live in sheds with motorbikes, I cannot, I really cannot recommend hydraulic lifts of some description uh, highly enough. They do. Your back thanks you. Your back just thanks you for them. And they are brilliant things. So I've been working on the MV this evening. Um, and that's coming along quite well. I've decided to carry on with my plan of getting it together uh, and seeing what it's like to, to not a great standard. I'm not doing like the rims are a bit rusty and a bit mucky and one thing or another. I'm not going to do them just yet. I'm just going to put it together, get it on the road, see what it's like, see what I've got to do uh, before I spend too much money on it. Um, so it, it's now getting screwed back together just for a, a tear around the, the lane. More of that later. Uh, right, let's, let's get on with this and uh, uh, we'll go for a little road trip now on the little 750 Breva and I'll give you my thoughts on it as I ride it. I've already, this is where it's weird, you see. I've, I've already done it. And, and I'm now talking to you like I'm going to do it because you're going to see it after this. <sighs> it's very weird, isn't it, this editing nonsense. I suppose if you're a professional at it, it would be easy. And if somebody wrote a script, which I don't live by a script, so I don't do these videos by a script. They are literally all ad lib um, and off the cuff. and how I happen to feel today and I, to be honest with you I feel very good today I, I've had a, a reasonable day I've had a pleasant day on the bike um, in terms of riding I've had a pleasant time working on the on the bike in the workshop and I, I'm having a pleasant <laughs> glass of red wine so um, you best push the share and the like and the subscribe and the notifications and all the other bits and bats that you and, um, and I'll talk to you soon. I hope you enjoy the ride on this bike with me. Um, it is super smooth. It's super comfortable. I if you if you want a 750 Guzzi and you can't quite stretch to the the V7 750s, you know the, the modern ones. Uh, look at the Breva. They're a little bit cheaper for pretty much the same bike. Like I say, they are a different styling. So if, if sort of fashion is, is important to you, perhaps that's not a great idea. But if all you worry about is the actual ride, Breva's a good choice. Have a look at it. See how you get on. Anyway, I'll go and share. Enjoy the ride. Here we have 750 Breva. Nice little bike. I think you could call it the forerunner to the uh, V7 Sport. I personally think it runs uh, very similarly to fuel injection. Slightly different design on the, the pots and what have you. Uh, a bit chunkier looking and rounded more on the V7. But this is still a handsome looking bike in my opinion. Um, no idea why they stopped making it because when you dig underneath it the chassis appears to be the same chassis uh, the times i have ridden this it is extremely comfortable so i'll take it on a run and uh, see what you think so here we go um again typical um because he fires up and gives you this instant sort of uh Guzzy note and feel. Uh, this goes from the 350s right the way up to the 1400s. 
it's um, a very pleasant sort of feel to it, it it's full of character um, and certainly not the sort of uh, your, your typical sort of uh, twin sound at all um, very very unique to, to Guzzi uh, and it's lovely it's a lovely smooth engine this one uh, they all are but the, the when I say this one I meant the sort of uh, the 90 degree V twin um, is a very smooth bike especially when you're in villages like this where you you're restricted to 20 mile an hour and they'll just bimble along very quietly very smoothly without any snatch or you know any, any problem at all they're just so civilized um, and it's one of the reasons why I, I've taken so much to Guzzi uh, again folks I'm doing this with a voiceover sat sort of watching it go by because I still haven't got the microphone to work with the camera very well you can hear it in the background that's the inbuilt microphone in the uh, system uh, but it has a remote mic that I've never really had much success with I must have to play with it a bit more I guess I don't know anyway uh, as I come to the end of the village and you're just bimbling along the 20 the nice thing about this bike and, and it's the same with the other guzzies but this one in particular does seem very nice it just snicking up into top fairly early and um, I can just really open it up on the open road bit goggles down and away we go it's it's very smooth it just pulls from nowhere uh, very much like the V7 like I said in, in the intro to the bike it's so similar to the V7 um, and if, it, it, if you prefer this style or if you're not bothered about the fashionability of the, the V7 and the stone and the cafe race and what have you, this is, a, is an economic uh, alternative to uh, the V7. It just is. Um, I don't understand, and a, a couple of my pals um, have said the same thing, none of us can understand why this bike wasn't more popular when it was in sort of new production because it really is a sweet little motorbike it's quite punchy um, it's very eager little engine really, I say little I mean God, when, when we were kids oh sorry I'll rephrase that when I was a kid uh, when balloons were fast fighters um, the, uh, the a 750 was a big bike oh, this just doesn't feel like a big bike it's, I actually call it the little 750 and it really is but it, it does sweep along very very nicely it, it's very flexible it's a good engine um, it appears to be everything anybody would want I, I guess but the um, it's not a sports bike let's make that very clear this is not a sports bike you are not going to die of excitement riding this thing you're not going to snap open the throttle and wish you hadn't it's just it just does everything in a very civilized manner so um i guess it's perfect for gentlemen of a certain age <laughs> as they say it's very easy it's very light super comfortable the ergonomics are just for my build you know I, i'm i'm 5 and as well just a snip under six foot and the ergonomics for my body shape and type and height it's very very comfortable and very easy to ride I've got to say it is such a simple device to ride if I have a criticism of it uh, it will be it's an easy fix uh, and it will be later on right through the lanes like this it's perfect no complaints whatsoever but as I said earlier the um, at motorway speeds with the wind on your chest it's not the most comfortable experience I think it does need something of a little screen maybe um, well it's either that or don't go on the motorway but occasionally you're stuck on sort of dual carriageways doing 70 mile an hour and it you know it, it does sort of um, get a bit uncomfortable but only because I'm, a, I'm an old fart and I like my creature comforts and I have got very used to sitting behind the Norge screen at higher speeds 
and that is just a wonderful aerodynamic package for my, again for my height and for me it may not suit everybody um, and that's true of any any bike you know bikes are very personal things um, like I say through these little lanes I mean you've got a nice day like today I mean it's not hot it's not too hot you know, you know the sun isn't trying to cook you out of your helmet and it's not cold and it's not wet this is really top end bike weather where it's just very comfortable the, the, the air is warm and you haven't got the glare of the sun and it, it's just really pleasant going through these little lanes and you can absorb it all and take it all in and enjoy it and and the bike just becomes part of you and it it's or you become part of the bike whichever uh, it really is just very very pleasant um, and when you see this sort of machine you sort of go what's the point you know it's not big enough to be a mega tour to go across continents it's not small enough to be a hooligan bike you know around town or around the lanes even so you, it, you do question what the point of it is until you actually ride it and when you ride it, it it's it speaks for itself it has its own place um, it's very difficult to actually um, describe because it's it's like everything isn't it it's a feeling uh, and you guys I'm sure uh, know this from your own experience you you get out of this what you put in and this little bike allows you to just get on with the, the ride and look around you you don't have to concentrate too hard um, on keeping it on the straight and narrow because it's a very stable little machine I found it super stable um, you know you could improve it I guess if you worked a bit and did a bit more on the suspension um, but watch this now it's going to come past this car as the road opens up for me I can just zizz open the throttle spins up the motor very easily it's not it's not a slouch but again it's not arm wrenching head snapping either it, it's just very capable and you cruising along here now up 60 odd and it's comfortable it's very comfortable there's no um, drama just easy comfortable pleasant all these expletives fit um, and when we come to the bottom of this hill I do come onto a, a, a dual carriage or a short one and again it's it pulls out of it briskly I think that's the best word brisk um, but it's very stable and it's confidence inspiring you're coming back from you know a long break off motorbikes this would be a good choice like it same as the v7 i said that about the v7 if you're returning to bikes after a long break you know the sort of you've got rid of the kids and whatever yeah? um good little bike to have i see it it picks up pace nicely it goes quickly but without being scary um and like i say very much a, a bike i would recommend to somebody if somebody came to me and said um what bike should i have i've been off bikes for 20 years uh but it used to have a sort of 900 something or other i'd go on oh, have a look at the 750 brothers you know they're, they're not expensive run it for a year or two and then up your game you know um because it's a it's an easy bike to return to biking with um and it, it, it they have got character they definitely have that guzzy character that you know you, you can't deny nobody can deny that they are very much um, their own machine this fan doesn't seem to want to get out of my way um, I forgot about this guy yeah, there he goes I can open her up again now like I say we get up to sort of 70 now on the uh, dual carriageway and it it just starts to get a little bit in your face as it were this the, the the wind speed and you think oh god do I need this and you don't you don't need it uh, a little screen would get rid of that instantly and it would be it wouldn't lose anything you'd just gain a bit of comfort 
Um, the one thing I will notice, as you come up to this 50, there is a speed camera here. No brakes, you roll it off. The engine braking on this thing is staggering. You shut the throttle, you, it's almost like putting the brakes on. Um, and a few people have made note of that to me. Uh, they've said, oh, have you noticed you, you don't need your brakes too much? And you don't, if you're just taking your time, you just on and off the throttle, it's, it's an easy thing to do. Um, it's now sort of a steady pace down to the next roundabout, um, which, again, it's it does this steadiness really well. It does this burbling along beautifully. And this is why I think it, it's a good return to biking bike or your first sort of medium sized bike if you're stepping up from a, a one two five. You know, it's it's a good thing. It's a it's a really good bike. And you you're not going to go to your local sort of uh bike cafe and there's two dozen of them there, you know, you're going you are going to be the individual on a guzzy. Um and they they do have that sort of cachet, that's a good word, about them. Um People actually come up to you and say, oh, you ride a guzzy. And you go, yeah. Uh, why? Because uh, I like them. And you, you'll end up in the same place as me. You can't actually explain what the hell it is you like about them. They're just really good pieces of kit. And when you get into them, they, they, nothing else is quite the same. They, they have this individuality about them, this character. Um, and you can forget all that you know, rubbish that people do, absolute bollocks about, oh it's a joke, it's uh, not Japanese, it'll be unreliable, they are super reliable bikes, trust me I've got six, uh, how many have I got at the minute, I've got four of them at the minute, and they are all very reliable, um, and well my knowledge has been all over Europe three or four times, and I've had a great time with it, not a problem, never, never missed a beat fantastic machine. Um, like I say, we're coming down onto the motorway and here's where this bike's really good. Suddenly I've got to make a fast decision and it lets you do it. It's nimble, it's manoeuvrable, you, it, it's not at all lumbering, it's quite uh, quite nice even sort of around town sort of thing. Um, making those quick decisions and those changes of direction does it in spades. Um, so now I'm off to see a pal of mine, and uh, I'm just going to have a little jog down the motorway. It's only a couple of uh, junctions, but it's pretty boring stuff, and you guys really don't need to see me ride down the motorway. So I think we'll um, we'll call this done as a video. I hope you've liked it. Hope I've sort of given you an insight as to the as to the 750 Breva and how good it is and how similar it is to the V7 um, and like I say you won't go far wrong if this is the type of bike you want this is, really is a good contender for the, um, the mid-range mid market anyway thanks for watching guys and talk to you again soon old guy riding off into the distance